just a heart that wants to seek your face It's all about to change, I'll never be the same She asked me to follow, and when the doubts return You speak a better word I promise I won't Southside Church, it is so good to be with you on our un online service this morning. We are live here at the church in the deep south Cape Town. It is half past eight in the morning. I hope that you are all up and watching with us um, today. Maybe you're in the lounge, maybe in your bed. But I hope that you engage with us this morning. And my name is Janine. And um, if this is the first time that you are watching with us, a very, very warm welcome to you. And we would love to connect with you more um, on our website, southsidechurch.ca.za. You'll be able to find a connection card. And if you fill in some of your details, someone will get in touch with you during the week. Um, later on, at the end of the service, we have a very, very exciting um, announcement. So if you are a parent with kiddies ages 4 to 10, then you, wanna, you don't want to miss out at the end of the service. So don't leave us, stay with us. Um, there's a nice announcement at the end. Um, this morning, we are going to be um, starting the service a little bit different before Pastor Grant comes up and preaches. And normally we would have a worship song. And for this season, we have been broadcasting uh, one of Hill songs or Bethel's worship songs. But from next week, we're hoping to come back with Southside worship. I've missed it. I'm sure that you've missed it. Um, so we are in that transition. But this morning, we're going to start by just being silent before God. And um, I just want to read a scripture to you. If it'll open up. There you go. It says, Psalm 46 verse 10 says, Be still and know that I am God. And Exodus 14, 14 says, The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. So this morning, we're just going to take a two-minute countdown. It'll be up on the screen in a moment. And we're just going to be still, come before God this morning, before the Word, open up our hearts and just get ready for God to speak to us. So would you close your eyes? And I'm going to pray. And then a two-minute countdown will come up. Father God, this morning we come before you. We want to be still before you, Father God. Our minds are so cluttered with so much we're thinking about and worries that we have. But Father God, in your word it says, if we just be still, you will fight for us, Father. So this morning as we just come before you and we still our minds and we still our hearts, would you speak to us? In Jesus' name, 
Amen. Father God, I thank you that, Father God, your power is made perfect in our weakness, in our lack, in our insufficiency. I thank you, Father God, that with a confidence in who you are as our good shepherd, going before us, making the path straight, we can be at peace in stillness and in confidence as we quietly trust you. And I pray, Father God, that you would let your peace rest in our hearts. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would speak to us in the midst of the chaotic uh, information overload of our time and the busyness of work that needs to be done that we would never lose sight of being able to become still, knowing that you are God and knowing that you are fighting before us. That Father God, your yoke is easy and your burden is light when life is overwhelming. And it's in that confidence that we rest today in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Welcome to our Southside Church online service. So good to be with you. My name is Grant and I get the privilege of being the lead pastor alongside my wife, of this beautiful community in the deep south of Cape Town, South Africa. And man, we are excited about the future. We're like a, um, a young teenager with the whole world ahead, them and, uh, ahead of them with all these ideas and dreams about what the future will hold. And that's part of our faith in what God's called us to three years old and growing and expanding and having the privilege of impacting lives together. As we know God, we find this freedom, we, we live out of our purpose and ultimately then make a difference. And uh, one of our culture codes at Southside Church is that we don't maintain, we multiply. And in 2020, there was a lot, a lot of maintaining. We were kind of just trying to hang in there and, and, and wait until the storm ended. And we had to realize that it wasn't going to to end as quickly as we thought and so there was no time to fall into maintaining but we needed to continue multiplying and we know God says that he will build his church and the gates of hell will not prevail and neither will this pandemic and so we've been pressing in by faith and moving forward and I want to share about some of the ways we are progressing and advancing even in the midst of this difficult season but before I do that I'm reminded of a story I heard from a well-known preacher about a moment when he was in the shops with his young 
young son and suddenly his son disappeared and he couldn't find him. And he spoke about how he would go to any length whatsoever to find his son. And I thought about that scenario and I was like, sure, what would I do if I was in a situation where I lost the son? I have a nine-year-old and a 14-year-old and you know, my nine-year-old is quite wild and crazy and we go walking in the forest, local forest here called Takai and man, I just played out the scenario in my mind. What happened if I was walking with my son and suddenly he disappeared? The first 10 minutes, I would kind of be agitated, looking around. Half an hour, I would start panicking. Within an hour, I would start running around, shouting his name everywhere, not worried about what people thought. And if it got to the 12-hour mark, the 24-hour mark, I would have by that time called the police and not just called the police and waited. I would have contacted friends and, and asked them to get their friends to assist. I, I would call them all together to gather at the point where we had parked initially. I, I would see if friends could get hold of walkie-talkies so we could all spread out. I, I would try and get those vests that are luminous. So if my son is somewhere in, and looking for people, he would see us in the dark. I, I, I would put rosters together with people as volunteers and, and, and I'd go, okay, we're gonna go in these shifts. We're gonna go throughout the night. Do we have enough torches? Who's gonna supply the torches? Do we have an, there would be strategy. We would be involved in strategic thinking, putting things together. And for people that weren't in the picture, they might come across us and go, why are you here strategizing while you're son is out there in the forest lost why don't you just forget about the strategic planning to find him and just go and do everything you can in your own strength to find him because very often we we can separate the idea of strategy and systems from the ultimate goal that is salvation of those that are drifting or far away in unsafe places and and so our heart is is to lead people to Jesus, that they would come to salvation like the lost son which returned to his father's house. But it doesn't mean we can just run out into the world and just try the best we do in our own strength. It's about coming together and strategizing and planning and having systems and processes in place not for the sake of systems, but ultimately for the sake of the salvation of the lost son. And so when I talk about upgrades and systems, I don't ever want us to feel like we're getting caught up in making a nice church. Everything we do is about reaching the lost son. And um, so as part of that, we've uh, started already engaging with some of our life groups uh, uh, and we have empowered and equipped our people that haven't had data, haven't had devices, so they can also be with us online enjoy, uh, enjoying the service. And we've already uh, given our two tablets uh, with uncapped data to empower and equip some of the leaders in certain areas so that our people can come together and enjoy this online connection and the ministry as God speaks. We also have been busy in our auditorium and you will see around me that there are a lot of unfinished things that are busy in the process of leading toward the prize, the goal of having a space that's conducive and, and, and better for our encounter and ministering to you online where you are right now, but also that will help us when we can come together in person in this house again pack this place out with two morning services, eventually three, four, five, six services, a bigger building one day. But as we're on the journey, we are now upgrading so that you have a better experience and can engage with God because this is all about equipping and empowering you. And ultimately these structures are about reaching the lost son. And so excuse the little bit of undone, unfinished stuff going on around me. We are in the process, but let's never forget what Proverbs 14, four to six says, the only clean stable is an empty stable so if you want the work of an ox and to enjoy an abundant harvest you will have a mess or two to clean up we're in the middle of a sacred mess of multiplication and we're super excited about what lies ahead of us and here's the powerful thing about all of this structure and all of these upgrades which are part of the strategy to reach the lost son see when you are following the purposes of God you will always see his supernatural provision and lo and behold we could have never believed that as we began to focus and talk around the sense of vision to 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 upgrade empower and equip people someone in our congregation came to us and gifted us and said God has asked me to gift you and they paid for labor and all of the uh, um, 
all of the uh, technology and um, the, the, the materials that were required for our upgrades. They gifted us with the labor paid for and all of the material that was required. How powerful is that when God steps in? This was over and above, this was an offering. And they actually ended up supplying us with the labor and all of the material. These are the powerful things God is doing. And the best is yet to come. We're still a young church. If God is doing things like this at such an early stage, imagine what God has for us as we continue to advance. And so whatever 2021 looks like for you, may you be encouraged in this, knowing that you are the church, we are the church, and we can already see God's miraculous provision as we follow his purposes. And I pray that's true of your personal life as well. And so talking about exciting progression and moving forward, um, we also are um, bringing Growth Track back. Uh, Growth Track is an on-ramp into the life of Southside Church. I want to encourage you, if you've been here for, for years and you're like, oh, I need to do growth track, I just can't do it during the week or I haven't been able to do all four Tuesdays or you're going, you know, we've just never kind of done it and this is a chance to do it, this might be your next step. If you're someone which is saying, hey, I like what Southside is about, I would like to go and really hear about their heart and soul before I make a final decision in partnering, this is your next step. If you've never done growth track but you're connected in the church to some degree, I wanna encourage you, this is your next step and what we are doing is we're going to do a one, one morning uh, express growth track where we do all of the steps in one shot with you. Three hours, including a break where we have something to eat and we're doing this in person with you. So no matter who you are, where you come from, if you can't travel at night or if you haven't been able to do all four or you just haven't got around to it, this is your chance. You can take out a pen right now. You can open your phone and put down on your calendar a reminder that on Sunday, the 28th of February, at 10 o'clock, right here in Southside Church building, we will be doing a growth track express just for you. You don't have to sign up. You don't have to fill anything in. You just arrive. You can bring your kids. We will have kids care for your children. So you don't need to go, oh, well, we've got kids. We can't leave them at home. We'll have someone here from our kids team that will be looking after your kids. Join us for those three hours. It will include a light snack between, and you will be able to take that step in really getting planted in the house. And God's word says, my people flourish planted in the house of the Lord. So join us the 28th of February, 10 in the morning for three hour express where we go through growth track with you and empower you to get planted truly in the house as we move into the future. So enough talking from me. Woo, that was a long conversation and now I will only start my sermon. <laughs> so let's pray for the word as we go into the word this morning. Father God, I thank you for all the beautiful things you are doing as you build your church in the midst of a season where we can often struggle to see a future. I thank you that we have a hope in you and I pray that Holy Spirit, as I preach the word, it would cut to our hearts. It would study us more than we study it and that Holy Spirit, you would lead us into our personal next steps as you speak in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. How beautiful is it to know that whether you are lying in bed watching or you're sitting with a cup of coffee in your house or at a coffee uh, bar somewhere that, that the Spirit of God can meet you exactly where you are in this present moment as you engage with ministry because the power of God's Word is something that transcends time and space. And so I'm the kind of guy, if I get kind of uh, into an activity or a task and I'm really involved and focused and I'm really trying to do it with detailed kind of, uh, you know, and take my time and something goes wrong, I'm the kind of guy which is like, oh, I just give up, I just can't, you know. If I'm working on a little model and then, I, you know, I, I stick it perfect and I got the other side on and then suddenly a piece falls off, I'm just, I, I freak out. I just, it used to happen to me a lot when I was young. I used to take the dominoes that my, my parents had and I stacked them, you know, to create 
create a domino thing and I'd be halfway through my little delicate thing and then I'd bump one of the dominoes. I'll just go, ah, give up. I don't know if you're like that. Not everyone is. Some people can start straight over. But I'm the kind of person which gets to a point where I'm just like, you know what? I give up. And there's been a lot of that feeling through the season of the pandemic, 2020 into 2021. It's just like, you know what? I, I, I give up. But, you know, I try to, you know, we saved, you know, I put so much into this business. I, I just give up. And we feel that way in so many areas of life in our human experience during this time and in the season. And there are headlines throughout uh, uh, um, the internet uh, and in newspapers that speak about this idea that kind of anything we've been working on or working towards has just been shattered. You know, it's like, ah, oh, just give up. It's just broken. It's not working. In fact, I looked through headlines and, and it says things like shattered dreams reeling from the impact of COVID-19. Uh, one article says coronavirus shatters Latin America's middle class dreams. Another, the chaos and caprice of COVID-19 pandemic has shattered those dreams. Someone else said study abroad uh, dreams shattered or delayed. Uh, and over and over, there's this idea that dreams have been shattered, that the things we've been working toward or believing for in our futures has been lost. You know, the, the weddings, so many people that I know that had these fairy tale weddings and they had to close it or they're not sure what to do now. Some are waiting until the 15th to hear what our president says because they, they don't know if they're going to cancel or have to lose the deposit on the place they paid for. Uh, people that had planned holidays and um, jobs, some people that were thriving in personal business and they lost everything and all of this. People that just lost jobs because the business couldn't continue. And, and so there's been so much of this idea of shattered dreams, uh, um, hopes lost altogether. And, and perhaps that circumstance is a reality for you where you are right now. But God doesn't waste our pain or allow those shattered dreams to steal our destiny. Even if it's true. God never wastes our pain or allows shattered dreams to steal our destiny. He is sovereign over all. And in the Old Testament book of Genesis in the Bible, we read of the life of a man called Joseph who was given a dream by God in which he rose up to be a great leader. A leader that would be so powerful that even his own brothers, his older brothers, would end up submit, submitting to his authority. But then what happens is this man, Joseph, goes into a season of around 13 years of enduring hardship and circumstances that seem to have shattered his dream. Firstly, he's sold as a slave by his own brothers. Then he becomes a slave in a great household until being sent to prison after being falsely accused. Shattered dreams. Sure, God, you know, I, I believed you for that, God, and I cannot believe this is how shattered dreams. Yet at the end of enduring the 13 years, through a string of sovereign events, God elevated Joseph until he was the governor over Egypt. And lo and behold, his older brothers bowed before him as he had once dreamt. And in that moment, he declared from Genesis 50 verse 20, You intended to harm me, but God intended it all for good. He brought me to this position so I could save the lives of many people. It's like we're in this place and things aren't working. There are many shattered dreams. We're frustrated and uncertain. And we thought after 2020, on midnight of 2021, as we started the new year, suddenly Corona would disappear and everything would be fine until we have the second wave. And again, this shattered dreams thing, this idea, oh, you know what? I give up, just whatever. I'm just surviving and getting through. But what if in this season where we thought we were suffering and struggling with our purpose, God actually was was going to use it for good. You see, Joseph wasn't going towards his dream. He wasn't just, I'm going toward my dream. In fact, it looked like he was being taken away from it and it was being shattered. See, Joseph wasn't going towards his dream. He was growing into it. And so what he may have assumed was shattered dreams was the process he needed to endure as the pathway to his destiny. He couldn't afford the attitude of, oh, you know what? It's not worked out. I give up. He couldn't afford that. 
he needed to continue. Okay, wow. Okay, God, can it get any worse? Yes, you'll be falsely accused, thrown into prison. Oh my word. Well, now I'm right in the depths of, of, of struggling, suffering. I'm as good as dead. Everything I dreamed about is gone. He couldn't afford it. Now, ah, I just give up attitude. And if we reflect on that in the light of 2021, God doesn't want you to just go through the season of struggle under the pandemic. He doesn't waste seasons. He wants you to grow. But that growth requires enduring the pain of progress. A growth that God wants to do in you through the season in which we assume our dreams are shattered requires that we embrace the pain of progress. Many years back, an old friend and I were invited on a six-month fitness trans transformation with this amazing guy who had won the Titans SA Fitness title, had his Western Province colors competing in the internationals at the Arnold Classic and receiving honors. Okay, this guy was a beast, a good friend. And, and over those six months, it meant that we were going to get up early for these morning sessions where we would do like 500 rep workouts aiming for 30-minute times or under. And my old friend that did it with me he he would often run to the nearby bushes on numerous occasions to get sick and I would collapse at the end of every workout feeling defeated and and we labeled that home where we went to train the house of pain you know he would phone me in the morning and say hey just to remind you in an hour we need to be at the house of pain <laughs> But at the end of those six months, embracing the house of pain and the nausea and running to the bushes, getting sick and feeling defeated on the floor, dead after these workouts. After all of that, my old friend lost 20 kilos and I was fitter, stronger and more confident than I was in my 20s. And it reminded me of the words of a Navy SEAL that I heard someone preach about once in which the Navy SEAL said, pain is weakness leaving the body. That's become like this thing I use in my head every time I'm training and it's getting sore. Pain is weakness leaving the body. You see, the pathway to our growth of muscle and healthy, a healthy body in this scenario required a process that involved pain. We even labeled the place that was part of the process, the house of pain. But it was a pain that we had to endure, not escape. It was a pain we had to endure, not escape. Now, Christian author, speaker, and church advisor, Dr. Sam Chan said, you will grow only to the threshold of your pain. So, I ask you the question as we process, and I'll ask this numerous times through today, and we will even land with this, and you'll go away this week reflecting on this, but I want to ask you in that context, what areas of discomfort or pain in your life that you've been trying to escape may God want you to endure as part of your growth? Now, in the New Testament book of 2 Timothy, Paul the Apostle writes to the young, insecure Timothy, and he says, endure suffering along with me as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. Soldiers don't get tied up in the affairs of civilian life, for then they cannot please the officer who enlisted them. Endure suffering. The, this church leader is speaking to Timothy and saying, part of the process of your growth and advancement in the things of God is calling you for a level of endurance in a season of struggle. Endure suffering along with me as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. And then in verse 12, the Apostle Paul continues, if we endure, we will also reign with him. If we endure and don't escape everything all the time, if we endure the pain of the process, we will also reign with him. That is God. So just as Joseph's brothers bowed to him because of the Egyptian Pharaoh's authority given to him, so ultimately we reign on the other side of our pain under the authority of our King Jesus. Now, English poet Christina Georgina Rossetti, who faced severe difficulties through her life because of her father's deteriorating mental and physical health in the 1840s, wrote these beautiful words. Although today he prunes my twigs with pain, yet doth his blood nourish and warm my root. Tomorrow I shall put forth buds again and clothe myself with fruit. 
the power of the process that leads to our growth is often one that's a little bit painful. And so I ask you again, what areas of discomfort or pain in your life that you've been trying to escape, may God want you to endure as part of your growth? What prison cell that you've experienced? Is God saying, don't give up, keep pushing in, endure the suffering like a soldier of Jesus, keep going? What, what, what place do you find yourself in that you're trying to escape? God might call you to endure. As Paul wrote, encouraging Timothy to endure, he related Timothy's attitude to that of a soldier, not a civilian, when he said, soldiers don't get tied up in the affairs of civilian life. Now, the word civil means relating to ordinary citizens and their concerns, you know, the things that concern us in our human experience every day. The bills, the fact that, oh my word, well, what am I going to do if I don't have that? Or, geez, uh, the, the, all those things. Now, Philippians 3, verse 20 tells us that under Christ, we aren't ordinary citizens. It says, but we are citizens of heaven, where the Lord Jesus Christ lives. This means we are to live out of the revelation of God's lordship as citizens of heaven and not just by the information re we receive from ordinary civilian life. There's something different about the way we engage and live. And we see God's people live this way throughout scripture where they are civilians or they citizens of heaven living out of the revelation of the kingdom and not just civilian information. They people who showed up and endured struggles under God's guidance that the rest of the civilian world sought to escape from. We see Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the Old Testament who chose to show up and endure the punishment of a fiery furnace rather than bowing to false gods with the rest of the civilian population. We see the insecure man called Gideon in the Old Testament who chose to show up and endure a military battle in which God had told him to downsize his army to just 300 men, which looked like foolishness to civilian observers. What are you doing? Less isn't more. More is better. We see this in a young shepherd boy who chose to endure the ridicule of the enemy who criticized his civilian clothing as he showed up in the arena of a one-on-one -on -one combat with the Philistine champion. But as each of these men endured the pain of leaving their comfort zones and civilian understanding with faith in God, they didn't only grow personally, but they experienced victorious outcomes in the very situations that seemed impossible to other civilians. Flames didn't burn. Enemies' armies were defeated and giants came falling down. I want you to know this that many of the miracles you are seeking lie on the other side of the uncomfortable and painful places you are trying to escape from. You are grand, but I don't want to go there. You know, that's just, I mean, I, I love that I serve God and like he's first in my life, but just that, I just don't. Uh, and, uh, many of the miracles you're seeking lie on the other side of the uncomfortable and painful places you're trying to escape. So in the words of the Apostle Paul endure suffering along with me as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. I'm going to endure, God. I know that you are with me. I trust you. Hebrews 10 verse 35 to 36 is a portion of scripture that I believe God put on my heart to encourage us in the season of having to endure the struggles of, of, of the pandemic we're living in, the uncertainties of tomorrow. And it says, so do not throw away this confident trust in the Lord, like he's got us. Remember the great reward it brings you. Patient endurance is what you need now so that you will continue to do God's will. Man, but God, it's so hard. God, I just don't wanna do that or go there or what. Uh, uh, you see, patient endurance is what you need now so that you will continue to do God's will. Then you will receive all that he has promised, all that he has promised. Now, this is still a difficult year, but we need to endure as soldiers of Christ Jesus. And soldiers don't walk around aimlessly. They don't plod wherever the path may take them. They don't tiptoe past obstacles, avoiding conflict. They march with focus and intent. 
2020 was a year of surviving. 2021 is a year of thriving. If we don't allow civilian affairs to keep us from focusing on God and His call, if we don't fall into the, oh, I just give up, the shattered dreams, nothing the way I expected it, I just give up. We will thrive if we don't allow the civilian affairs to keep us from focusing on the supernatural God that calls us. And this is where I believe God has impressed the scripture on my heart for you and me in our personal lives and for us as a church. From Judges 5, 21, as God's people were singing a victory song, march on with courage, my soul. March on with courage, my soul. Oh man, oh, I'm struggling. My dreams are shattered. I'm not sure about tomorrow. This doesn't make sense. I don't want to do that. I'm scared. This is painful. But I will endure as a soldier of Christ Jesus and march on with courage, my soul. 2021, march on with courage, my soul. While much of the civilian population live as victims in the wreckage of shattered dreams and civilian affairs, we as citizens of heaven march on as victors with courage as he calls us. And at the end of it all, we will declare the same as Joseph did in Genesis chapter 50, 20. You intended to harm me. What in this season, the enemy intended to harm me, to destroy me. Oh, I lost everything and the enemy then intended to harm me. But God intended it all for good. He brought me to this position so I could save the lives of many people. How will clarity of God's purposes be revealed when we get through the season? Because we didn't focus so much on escaping, but rather enduring and marching on with courage, my soul. So I ask you the question a third time today. What areas of discomfort or pain in your life that you've been trying to escape may God want you to endure as part of your growth? March on with courage, my soul. Where? Where is he calling you to march with courage? It may not just be every day to wake up and remain faithful to the course he's called you on. But it, it may be you going into different areas of your life, internally, externally, in relationships with others, in practical application of serving or, or extending your hands in service to God. What areas of discomfort or pain in your life that you've been trying to escape may God want you to endure as part of your growth? March into with courage. You see, it's going to take courage to endure and grow amidst the pandemic in 2021 because courage is defined by Professor Brene Brown, who spent many years studying the topic, is in essence vulnerability. She says at the core, it's about vulnerability. And she says vulnerability is not about winning or losing. You know, we think, oh, no, I don't want to be vulnerable. That's weakness. No, it's not about winning or losing. It's about showing up when you can't control the outcome. If that's what courage is, then that's the exact thing we need to show up in the midst of the pain or the season we would rather escape. It's about showing up in a fiery furnace when you might be consumed by the flames. It's about showing up on the battlefield with only 300 soldiers when you might be engulfed in defeat. It's about showing up in the arena of your Goliath when you might be crushed. Courage is showing up in the struggle when you can't control the outcome. And that needs to be our attitude if we're going to enter and endure the uncomfortable and painful areas of our lives where God wants to grow us. That's going to need to be the attitude we embrace if we're not going to give up in 2021, but keep marching on toward the prize that lies ahead over and above this painful season. I know that many miracles that you are seeking lie on the other side of the uncomfortable and painful places you may be trying to escape. But, but Grant, you don't understand. I, I, I just don't feel it's, it's worth going back to that internal place of painful memories, Grant. Uh, I, don't, I don't feel I'm worthy of serving, Grant. So even though I, I'm uncomfortable, I just, I don't feel worthy. Well, well I, I know that uh, I just don't feel it's right for me. Even though I know it's God's will, I, I just don't feel it's right for me. Now, now, there are many emotions and feelings that will be stirred up if we begin to march courageously into enduring through places and in spaces in our lives that have been very 
very painful. It's going to lift all those kind of emotions and feelings. But what we must understand that in our human experience, emotional pain is an unpleasant feeling that causes discomfort and distress. It's important that we acknowledge our emotions because it's when we believe that we have no emotions that they can most easily have us. You see, we will either deny certain emotions exist. No, I, I don't have a problem there. I don't need to sort that out. There's no pain there in Jesus' name. But we deny our emotions in order to escape the pain or the shame that they bring to the surface, or we sometimes buy into the lie that we are our feelings. Because I am, therefore I cannot. And when this happens, when we, when we either deny our emotions or we buy into the lie that we are our feelings, we view our emotions as directives instead of data. So you're hearing this right now and you're going, sheesh, Grant, you don't know how painful that place is. You don't know how uncomfortable it is for me to actually extend myself and serve because I don't do that. You know, I just sit in the background and uh, wh whatever it is you need to do. Uh, Grant, you don't know how much pain uh, and shame would go with that conversation I need to have with that person around the issue which we're struggling with. Grant, you don't know how much I've lost, you know, Grant. So you can say, oh, just march on with faith, but you don't know how much I've lost. You are feeling these things, but you are not your feelings. And and, and so we need to understand our emotions are not directives, but they are data. You see, emotion is data to be explored, not decisions to be made. Oh, I'm feeling so bad. I'm so scared. I'm feeling, it's feeling too painful to go there. And so we assume that our emotions are the things that should direct us when in fact they are only data to be explored. Why do I feel this pain when I go there? Why do I feel afraid to stand before that giant in my life? And that's why 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5 in the New Testament says, we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. You see, between my emotions and my choices is a space in which I can explore the data because emotions are data and 2 Corinthians then says I can choose to make that data obedient to Christ before I make a final decision on my direction it's not denying our emotions and feelings or defining ourselves by them but understanding that they aren't our directives only data and information to explore so there's a gap between what I feel and how I respond because emotions are data, my choices are direction. I still get to make a choice. There's a gap between what you feel and how you respond. And if we're going to march on and show up, it's not about feeling courageous, but choosing courage. It's not about feeling courageous, relax. It's about choosing courage. You might feel scared, process the data, and then you can take the thoughts captive and say, over and above my feelings, I still have the power to choose my direction. And so I choose to march on with courage. It reminds me of scripture in the New Testament, 2 Timothy 1 verse 7, in which we read, for God will never give you the spirit of fear, but the Holy Spirit who gives you mighty power, love, and self-control. How can I have self-control? Because you are not your feelings and your emotions are data to be explored, not directives to leading your life necessarily. So explore the information that you process through your feelings and then bring them captive under the authority of Jesus. And then with a spirit of self-control, choose courage even in the midst of your emotions. You see, data is information, but then in our God-given ability to freely make choices, we can process the civilian information through heavenly revelation. Remember, you're a citizen of heaven. We don't wanna to get too involved in civilian affairs because we're gonna march on with courage. And so I experience emotions and fear in the process, but I know that, that, that data is the information from my feelings, but then in my God-given ability to freely make a choice, I can process that civilian information from my emotions through heavenly revelation and make choices and take directions that might look impossible or crazy in the sight of others. 
And after all, we understand as citizens of heaven, we are enduring as soldiers of Jesus Christ, not getting caught up in civilian affairs. So here is what we're going to do for 2021. In 2021, we're going to march on with courage and show up in every area of our lives that God calls us to, in our emotional, physical, and spiritual beings. Woo! And when we show up in obedience, God shows off with the outcome. Giants fall while great armies watch. 300 men defend and defeat armies of thousands. Four men don't burn in a fiery furnace, but they are rescued and saved and become a testimony to those that were watching. Many of the miracles that you are seeking lie on the other side of the uncomfortable and painful places you've been trying to escape. But now we are going to march on with courage and we are going to show up. I want you to join me on this journey of choosing courage and showing up in the area of struggle when you don't have control of the outcome. Because at the end of the day, God is sovereign in all of these things. So if you're with me right now, wherever you are, I would love you to engage with me by putting your hand on your heart as we pray. I'd also encourage you to interact online if you're with us and put a praying hand as we go into this time of praise, a symbol that you are seriously engaging in choosing courage under the sovereignty of Jesus Christ, even when you don't understand. I believe this is a prophetic word from God. I believe this is an anthem that he's encouraging us to sing from our hearts in this painful and difficult season. March on with courage, my soul. So let's pray together. Father, we come before you. And Lord Jesus, I thank you that we can let go of the false sense that we were ever in control. That Lord Jesus, the outcomes belong to you. The obedience is what's required of us. And I ask, Lord, Holy Spirit, that you would stir our hearts and minds and stir in us the courage to step into arenas, spaces and places which we've avoided and tried to escape because they are perhaps painful or difficult to face. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that in a season and a time where we can we can lean into the idea of just giving up and going with the flow that you would remind us through your word to march on with courage, my soul. Lord, I pray that as we choose to focus on you, march as citizens of heaven in a season where civilians are suffering with a pandemic, that you would give us the personal breakthroughs and miraculous manifestations that we require in whatever areas of our lives we are suffering now, struggling with or in lack. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you would call us to march on with courage, that you would lead us in 2021, that, Father, you would lead us to places where we're not just surviving but thriving, that, Father God, we would look back and declare the words of Joseph, that what intended to harm us a season of loss and uncertainty, you, God, were able to use for our good because we showed up in the struggle without needing control of the outcomes that were all up to you. So, Father, with our hands and our hearts, we commit to courageously begin showing up, marching forward, no longer just stumbling around or trying to escape, but enduring, my God, under your sovereign hand that goes before us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I'm committed to that. I believe that there are going to be some very significant things that God does as we've started and just set up the context for our journey around courage. And uh, as we go today, you this week will see that at Southside Church, every week we post a devotional out on Facebook. Um, uh, I think we also put the link on Instagram um, and it's on our website. And I would love to encourage you as part of this journey with us. Uh, many people in Southside Church are in life groups. We're soon going to be talking 
talking into life groups after the 15th to give you more information. We're also going to give you more information around coming back to church. But for now, can I encourage you this week to go and uh, intentionally uh, get that devotional, open it up and process it. And I want you to prayerfully this week reflect on the question we started with and repeated a few times. It's this question. What areas of discomfort or pain in your life that you've been trying to escape may God want you to endure as part of your growth? And if this week it's just about beginning to identify those areas, that's the first step in the right direction as we courageously march on in Jesus' name. And so could I encourage you to do that with us, engage in that devotion as part of this process together. And as I'm here with you right now, you might be going, Grant, yo, I'm inspired. I want courage. I want to follow Jesus in the future. But you're saying, Grant, I have a religious concept of Jesus, but I don't know him as my personal Lord and Savior. And God so loved you that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him won't perish but have eternal life. And all we need to do to experience that salvation is call on the name of the Lord. I had the privilege yesterday of, of leading a man, a Muslim man that's been living in a very uh, difficult country. He's been persecuted, but he, he messaged me and said, will you, will you lead me to Jesus? And I was able to sit with him and voice message over a, an online platform. And then he followed the prayer I prayed and gave his life to Jesus. And afterwards he messaged me. I'm literally sending him photos, screenshots of Bible verses because he can't have a Bible in his country. And, and, and as I pray for him and I finish, she says, Grant, I feel like something's lifted off me. I feel something's changed in me as you led me in that prayer. And right now you can call on the name of the Lord and be saved. And so if that's you and you're with me right now, I would love you to repeat this prayer as I lead you and open your heart to Jesus wherever you are right now. So pray this with me if that's you. You want Jesus to become your Lord and Savior. Lord Jesus, I come before you. Lord Jesus, I confess I'm a sinner in need of a savior. Lord Jesus, would you come into my life? Would you be my Lord? Would you be my savior? In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Wow, what an inspiring message this morning. And may we march on with courage and may we show up every day even though we can't control the outcomes. I am super inspired. And if you made that um, decision this morning for the first time to make Jesus your Lord and Savior, we would love to help you with your next steps. Um, if you go to our website, southsidechurch.zero.za, you'll be able to find a connection card, fill out your details, and we will get in touch with you and help you with your journey. Um, this morning we, we want to go into a time of giving and we never want to neglect the privilege and the opportunity to bring back to God. And although we may not be in the building, we have um, made different um, options available on our website. Um, we have EFT details, there's SnapScan, and there's PayFast. So you can uh, go onto our website and you'll be able to find all those options because we want to bring back to God, like Malachi 3 verse 10 says, bring your whole tithe into the storehouse so that there may be food. Test me on this and won't I throw open the doors and windows of heaven so that you may be blessed. And we pray for that this morning, that you may be blessed as we are obedient to God, that we may be blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. Right now, I'm going to call up Lizette Solomons, and she is our kids, Southside Kids leader. And she's coming on. She's coming here, marching on this morning. I'm excited for her um, announcement. So over to you. So, boys and girls, hello! It's me, Lizette! Yes, where's my boys and girls? I hope you're listening very nicely because I have some awesome news announcement that I need to make today. And that is on the 21st of February, which is next week, Sunday. Come on, where's my drum roll? Wait going online, yeah, 
Yes, Kids Church will be going online next week for all the kids between the ages of 4 and 10 years old. So, moms, dads, omas, opas, uncles, aunties, cats and dogs, listen carefully. So, when it is the adult church, right after adult church, we're going to transition over to kids online church. So parents, don't touch the screen. Call your kids, sit with them. This will be a great opportunity where you can connect with your kids and have fun and meaningful conversation. So diarize it, put it in your Google Drive calendar, write it behind the toilet door for all I care. But 21st February, we going online. All right, so before I go, I know that some of our kids have started their school year already. But tomorrow, most of you will be going to school. And this would be the first time for a lot of kids. It's going to be a little bit scary and it's going to be a little bit frightening. But you know what? You got this. You might feel like, oh, it's new faces that I'm going to see, new teachers. I might have to make new friends. And it can be a little bit overwhelming. But I want to say to you today, boys and girls, wherever you are, you are brave. You are strong. And you are courageous because God is with you. And as we enter online with our new series, Having Courage, we will give you all the tools you need to know to step into your school year with courage. All right, so I'm going to close off with the priestly prayer. And I tweaked it a little bit, specially designed for our boys and girls out there. So let's close our eyes. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Father, for all our boys and girls that's watching today, we pray a special blessing on them. May your favor be with them and may your mighty angels protect them as they enter into their school here tomorrow morning. May the Lord turn your face towards you and give you peace. Boys and girls, we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.